Now, sometimes you come across circuits that require matched diodes, whether it's for a balanced mixer or modulator for RF applications, or even something like a guitar effects pedal. So in this video, we're going to talk about diode matching and the various techniques that you can use to identify and find matched diodes. We'll talk about a couple of techniques for matching diodes by just using the manufacturing lot uh, when you buy them. Or maybe using the diode check function that is in your DMM. It's a simple way to measure them and, and match them. Or maybe you'd put together a simple uh, circuit with a power supply and a resistor using a DMM to, uh, to check and match the characteristics of a diode. Or maybe do a more extensive voltage current or IV curve uh, matching technique. And then we'll finally talk a little bit about some other matching considerations that might be important depending on the type of application or circuit you're working with. So let's get started. So the first one is lot matching. And I'll say that it, it generally doesn't work. I mean, you can uh, oftentimes find uh, diodes that um, are matched pretty well within a manufacturing lot, but there's really no guarantee because even the stresses of packaging the devices and things like that can oftentimes change the diode characteristics. So I would say in general, uh, you don't really want to use just simple lot number matching to, uh, to match diodes. The next uh, easiest one and simplest one is to use the DMM diode check. And in this case, the DMM puts a fixed amount of current through the diode and measures the voltage across it. And this works uh, you know, pretty well. It's a very, very simple thing to set up. So here I've got my Fluke 87 set to the diode test function. I've got a couple of uh, 1N914 diodes here that came out of a bag that was marked with the same lot. And you can see this particular diode measures uh, about 540 millivolts, uh, while this one here measures about 615 millivolts. So the same lot, but not necessarily the same characteristics of that diode. So we can see one of the advantages of this method is it's really quick, really easy. You simply put the meter in that diode test function, connect it up. The downside is it only tests the diode at one forward current. The Fluke 87 I was just using makes about uh, 0.65 milliamps or about 650 microamps of current to test the diode. I've got a Fluke 79 here that uh, does about 0.6 milliamps, but there's no consistency in the current that's being used. So you might get some misleading results if you, certainly if you test the diodes with different meters. Also, you have to consider that the test current that's being used may or may not be close to the diode current that's going to be used in the particular circuit or application. So that's one of the downsides to this very simple method. Now, oftentimes the higher-end bench DMMs will give you a choice of what current to use to actually go test the diodes. So in the case of this Fluke 8846, we can see that in the diode test mode we have a choice of 1 milliamp or 100 microamps test current. Similarly, on this Keithley 2015, I've got a choice of, in this case, this is the 100 microamp setting, 527 millivolts, and the 1 milliamp setting, 632 millivolts. So, in the case of the bench DMMs, you have a choice generally of two, sometimes more, uh, different diode current settings, and that may allow you to pick a diode current that is closer to the particular application that you're going to be using the diode in. Now if your DMM doesn't have a diode test function, or if the test current it uses is nowhere near the current that's going to be uh, driven through the diode in the application or the circuit, you could use your own power supply, resistor, and DMM test circuit so that you can test the diodes and match them at a diode current that you pick or you specify. Now the power supply could be either be a fixed power supply uh, or even you know a battery or something like that, whatever you've got around, or a variable lab power supply. The resistor can either be a fixed resistor or even a, a variable resistor or even a decade box. But at the end of the day, you just want to be able to adjust those two parameters, one or the other, to result in the test current that you uh, want to send through the diode to test it. And of course that test current is simply equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistor value. And of course you could measure the resistor with your DMM, you can measure the voltage across the resistor and predict it that way. Or if you simply measure across the diode and resistor combination, that would essentially be your supply voltage, whether it's a battery or a lab power supply. Subtract off the diode voltage uh, and divide it by the resistor value. That gives you your test current. Now, of course, uh, the larger you make the test voltage with respect to the diode voltage, 
the less precise you've got to be in terms of predicting this up front. You could just use an approximation, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, something like that, and get yourself close. So here's our simple setup. I've got a 10K resistor that I measured with the meter at 10.6K, connected in series with my diode under test, uh, connected across a 10 volt power supply. So I can see my 10 volt uh, power supply here. If I measure the voltage across the diode, I see 639 millivolts. So if I take 10 minus 0.639 divided by 10.6K, that gives me about 0.88 milliamps or 880 microamps of test current. Now, of course, if that's not exactly the test current I want, I can adjust the resistor value or adjust the power supply to get what I want. Once I get those test conditions right, then I can swap in additional diodes to see if they all measure that same uh, voltage at that desired test current. So as we just saw, the advantage of this method is that you can pick the test current that you want so it matches your application. The downside is it's a bit more complicated to set up. So let's take a look at a way to alleviate a little bit of that. Now, of course, if you have two multimeters available, you could eliminate the need to have to compute the desired test current by simply measuring it directly. Use one meter as an ammeter in series with your resistor and power supply, and the other simply as a voltmeter across the diode. So now each time you put a new diode in, you can make a minor adjustment to the power supply or maybe a potentiometer being used for the resistor to set the current to be the same for each diode that you put in there and get a very precise match at that particular test current. Fast and easy to measure multiple devices, no computations necessary. The downside is obviously that it requires two multimeters. Okay, so here's the setup with uh, two meters. I'm still using the 87 to measure the voltage across my diode, but I'm using the Fluke 79 here as an ammeter uh, in series with my 10 volt power supply. So I'm seeing that same 880 uh, microamps that I mentioned earlier with that 10 volt supply. But let's say I wanted a 1 milliamp test current. I can simply ramp up the power supply here and let's see I get up to about 11.3 uh, volts here and now I'm just over 1 milliamp of test current and I can actually see my diode voltage now 645 uh, millivolts. So now I can pop in additional diodes and if, it, if necessary do a fine tune of the current and measure the diode current or excuse me, the diode voltage for each of my test diodes and find those that match the same voltage uh, for a given test current. And one of the downsides of all the methods we've mentioned so thus far is that they make the diode voltage measurement at one particular test current. And that's okay if that's the only place where they need to match. Because the reality is, is that the IV characteristics of the diodes uh, can vary, uh, even within the device family. You can have devices that turn on late but have a very steep turn on. You have devices that turn on early and a very shallow turn on. And what you'll find is that, for example, at this particular test current, these two diodes have got the same exact voltage. But at a much lower current, they'd have a very different voltage. So it really depends on where that device is going to be used and if it needs to match over a wider range of diode currents. And if that's the case, and that's actually probably most likely the case, you really need to try to match multiple points across that curve. So you, of course you can do this with some of those previous measurements by making yourself multiple measurements at various test currents and plot them out yourself on paper or with Excel or something like that. But you do have to take into account what those curves look like so you don't get fooled by places where they have the same exact voltage because they might be quite different when you actually test at a different current level. So again, the techniques would be you know, to use the previous methods to make multiple measurements or use something like a curve tracer or even a modern instrument like a source measure unit to actually go make uh, the measurement of these particular curves. Old curve tracers like this Tech 576 often have two test sockets and a switch that allows you to switch between left and right. So you can very quickly switch between two different devices and compare the curves visually on the screen. Let's take a look at the two diodes that we used at the beginning of the video with the simple DMM diode check. These diodes came out of a bag that was labeled with the same lot but had very different results in the diode check. So I'll start off with one of the diodes here. If we sweep it up here, we can see we're running at 100 millivolts horizontally per division. So just past about a half a volt, we start ramping up and we're at 200 microamps a division. So right in the middle, we're at 1 milliamp. And we can see where that is uh, crossing here at the 1 milliamp boundary. We switch over to the other diode, we can see that one is actually quite different. 
So very different characteristics between these two diodes. So I've now swapped in another diode that matches the first one very, very closely. So if we take a look at the curve for this device here and switch over to the other device, these two curves are very, very close to each other. So by using a curve tracer such as this, it makes it very easy to match the IV characteristics over a wide current range, and that's typically what's important in most applications that require matched diodes. So what other considerations are there when using matched diodes? Once you've established a matched pair, you want to ensure that when you mount them in the circuit that they are maintained at about the same temperature. Because there is a pretty strong temperature coefficient, about uh, 2 millivolts per degree C. So you've got to watch for self-heating, actually when you're actually doing the matching itself, especially if you're matching them at a higher uh, test current. But then also when you mount them in the application, you wouldn't want one of these diodes sitting next to, say, a power regulator chip that gets hot versus the other one sitting away from it next to maybe a low power op amp. You want them mounted in a spot where they're going to be kind of matched in temperature. So here's a simple example uh, illustrating that temperature coefficient or the temperature effect. I got the diode connected up to the meter here. If I simply exhale on it, you can see I made nearly a 10 millivolt change by simply breathing on the diode and changing its temperature. So you do have to watch that when you're applying the circuit in your application. Now the last thing to mention here is to consider the application. You really want to understand why that application needs matched diodes and what does it need to match. Is it a particular uh, voltage current range within the diode curve that he has to match? You know, what's the operating point in the particular circuit? You know, that circuit might actually need the reverse recovery characteristics of the diode to match. Now we didn't talk about that in this video, but I do have another video that talks about reverse recovery time measurements, and I'll link that down below. Uh, for RF, or high frequency applications, it might be that the diode junction capacitance is what has to match in order to get the particular characteristics out of that circuit. I do have a video that talks about diode capacitance measurements in my Varactor diode video. Again, I'll link that one down below. Uh, it might be leakage current or other characteristics that have to match uh, in order for the circuit to work properly. So the bottom line is to really understand the application, what needs to match, and make sure you make those measurements to match those diodes as close as possible to the operating conditions that they're going to see in that application. Right, so I hope you learned a little something about diode matching and the different considerations that you've got to take into account when matching diodes. If you like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber already, thank you. If not, uh, please consider subscribing and also clicking the little bell down below the video uh, in, the vid in the YouTube page to get notified when I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching and we'll see you again next time.